Hello. Hello and welcome everyone to the uh, third uh, interactive uh, live session uh, of the course Microwave Engineering. I am Susan, PhD scholar at, uh, electrical, Engin uh, at uh, electrical Engineering Department IIT Madras. So this is a weekly one hour session on Google Meet every Friday from 7 pm to 8 pm uh, to interact with you or and uh, try to solve some sample problems uh, and uh, clarify your uh, doubts. So hope uh, last week's session, problem solving session was uh, helpful uh, in um, attempting the weekly assignment. So this week uh, I have come up with uh, week three content uh, so so i hope i'm audible can anybody please just uh, let me know in the chat yes you are yeah, yeah yeah thank you so yes i'm your audible yeah, thanks thanks uh, so uh, let me start with the the week three uh, content the So basically week 3 content is uh, based on microwave networks and uh, scattering param uh, scattering metrics. So we uh, um, so as you have all seen the video lectures you might have come across uh, n port microwave networks and uh, equivalent uh, voltages and currents and uh, the need for uh, scattering metrics or what is the significance of s parameters. Uh, in the microwave regime all these had been looked at and uh, finally in the last lecture uh, there had been a discussion on transmission metrics uh, basically the ABCD matrix or we call it as ABCD parameters uh, so as you see here in this figure uh, you, you I hope uh, you understand uh, the, the application of microwave networks or where this scattering matrix is relevant or what is the significance of that. So if you look at this, uh, some of the examples like filters, so you have uh, say maybe you have a low pass or a high pass or a pan pass, any kind of filters, they are basically two port networks. So you have a port 1 and a port 2 and the filter is being designed to work on at microwave frequency or microwave regime and if you look at the second figure here this is a Wilkinson power divider as you see here this is a three port network so this uh, as you see here this is say I can take this as port 1 so power input at this port 1 is being divided into port 2 and port 3 so this is kind of a power divider so you you might have come across this as well so all these kind of uh, uh, kind of devices need 
the analysis based on uh, microwave networks and the scattering matrix. So if you look at this figure, so this is an arbitrary end port microwave network. To brief out some of the concepts which we which is already being uh, um, discussed in the video lectures. So if you see that uh, you have voltages and currents. So voltages and currents. So if you look at V plus I plus or V1 plus I1 plus. So basically the number indicates the port number and plus this is voltage plus and another is IN plus. So this is the incident voltage wave and if you look at the minus, so this is the uh, reflected uh, voltage on current wave. So this has been uh, defined at the various ports, so the voltages and the currents. And there had been discussions on the Z matrix and Y matrix. So let us go to some of the details and try to interact a little bit. Uh, we can use the chat uh, for interaction. Uh, so some questions I have. So uh, based on the video lectures, uh, so what do you think? Is measurement of voltage and current practical at microwave frequencies? Uh, you can type in the chat box whether it is uh, yes or a no. Is measuring voltage and current practical at microwave frequencies? Yes. Uh, as many of you are saying, yes, yeah, it is not practical to measure voltage and current. So as you see in the initial lectures, there, there is uh, V is equal to Z matrix into I. So here we have this Z matrix and I is equal to Y matrix. So this is also matrix basically Y matrix into V. So this Z and Y matrices are relevant when we can measure voltages and currents. So at microwave frequencies this Z and Y matrices become uh, a little insignificant and therefore we need this uh, scattering parameters. Uh, so before going to that, we try to understand equivalent voltages, currents and impedance. So there is equivalent voltages. So when we say microwave frequencies or any electromagnetic wave, we always uh, talk, say we let us take an example of a coaxial line. So in a coaxial line, uh, all, of, all of you know that uh, inner conductor and outer conductor. So you have the electric field lines which are radial in direction and the magnetic field lines is like circular in nature. And if you take the example of a rectangular waveguide, so you have say electric fields in one direction. So electric fields are along the y direction. So basically we talk about electromagnetic fields. So electric field and magnetic field. So we don't talk about voltages and currents. But when in the case of microwave we need to understand that there is equivalent voltages and currents. So this equivalent voltage is proportional to electric field and the equivalent current is proportional to this uh, uh, magnetic field. So that is uh, some of the discussions in the initial lectures and you look at impedance. So this impedance is nothing but V0 by I0. So it's a ratio of equivalent voltage and equivalent current. And uh, let me uh, quickly go through some of the basics, not in detail. So we have, uh, you, have you might have already looked at uh, what is a reciprocal network and what is a lossless network uh, to uh, to better understand this concept of uh, that uh, let us look at some uh, matrices uh, can you tell me 
the this very first matrix whether it is reciprocal and whether it is lossless uh, you can type in the chat and uh, tell me why what is the reason why do you say if it is reciprocal why so if it is lossless why so ma'am it is reciprocal because all the elements of the matrix are complex numbers and it is not lossless okay so can you tell me uh, why it is not lossless ma'am that i am not sure but i am sure that it is reciprocal because mm -hmm. all the elements are uh, complex numbers okay uh, i think i need to uh, little bit uh, correct this because reciprocity is a different property lossless nature is another property okay so as you see, say that lossless property so as you said uh, looking at the elements you can say all the elements are imaginary and you can say that it is it is lossless okay now looking at so this is lossless because all elements are complex numbers all these matrix elements are complex in nature now second property is reciprocity can anybody else comment on reciprocity how do we say whether a, a network is reciprocal how do we say can we look at the transpose yes we look at the symmetry property so if z matrix is equal to z transpose then we can say it is reciprocal so is this a reciprocal network let me see the chats yes is this a reciprocal network no this is not a reciprocal reciprocal network but this is a lossless network so coming to the second example uh, how about this is it reciprocal is it lossless coming to the second matrix it is not lossless but it is reciprocal yes it is not lossless but reciprocal okay i hope this is clear let us quickly move to the next uh, so so this we have already discussed why uh, z and y matrices are not used at microwave frequencies because uh, measurement of voltages and currents are not practical and uh, we can quickly uh, look at the scattering matrix formulation as you already so uh, the matrix b is equal to uh, s matrix into a matrix so uh, can you say what is b and a here or what is actually this b and a a is incident wave and b is reflected wave okay so can we make it little more clearer what is actually is it a, a voltage is it a power can we make it little more clear it's a power ma'am power descriptor incoming incident incoming normalized hmm. power wave okay so all of okay. us know yes. this relation p is equal to v square by r so if i take the square root of this root p that is v by root of r okay so now let me Uh, quickly refresh your concept on which is already being discussed in the lectures a n and b n so n depends on the port number so a n is incident so let me write it as v n plus divided by root z not n and b n is v n minus by root of z not n so you see you try to compare this voltage by square root of z voltage by root r so basically we are looking at the powers 
and you you i hope you are able to correlate these two okay so let us uh, move on to our uh, session a let us learn to solve some sample problems and sample conceptual questions so look at the first problem uh, okay this is a, a true or false question so for a reciprocal n port network impedance and admittance matrices are not symmetric so we are given with the reciprocity i hope you can able to uh, comment whether it is a true or false ma'am false okay so why do you say false because both both impedance and admittance are uh, symmetric for uh, mm. reciprocal network network yes yes so okay so let us i hope this is very clear to everybody let us go to the next question if a network is lossless already being discussed all elements of the impedance and admittance matrices are imaginary is this a true or false statement yes true it's a true statement so if all the elements of an s matrix is imaginary terms so all complex terms then we say the network is lossless so oh, sorry let me correct myself this is z z and y okay uh, now let us solve uh, one problem let us try to solve this so this for the network shown in the figure z21 so uh, make sure that you write it like this so z21 parameter is given by so how do we uh, analyze this network uh, for the z21 parameter so when we say z matrix uh, always uh, try to uh, write down the fundamental relation i v1 is equal to i1 z11 plus i2 z12 and v2 is equal to i1 z21 plus i2 into z22 and what is that we are supposed to find out we are supposed to find out z21 so what is z21 out of this so let us look at second equation only so second equation z21 is v2 by i1 when under the condition i2 is equal to 0 so i hope all of you know this uh, from the lecture so let us uh, understand what is v2 and what is the ratio of v2 to i1 when i2 is 0 so look at what is i2 i2 is the current flowing in this direction and this is being told as 0 so that means there is no current flowing as i2 there is only one current that is i1 and we need to find v2 okay so there is one only one current i1 which will flow in this particular network okay so we need to know find out what is v2 and take the ratio of v2 to i1 you will get the z21 so what is v2 let me try to write what is v2 so what is v2 let us look at the voltage at this point if you look at the voltage at this point so i1 is the current flowing here so i can say voltage here will be i1 z1 so this will be the voltage here so i1 z1 into so we are looking at v2 v2 is across this impedance z3 v2 is across z3 so how do we write it this voltage into z3 z3 divided by z1 plus z2 plus z3 okay so now take v2 by i1 so when you take v2 by i1 you get the answer as z1 z3 divided by z1 plus z2 plus z3 so this is z21 so you have this in the answer options 
this is option D. So whichever parameter you want to find, take it from these fundamental equations and then apply the condition. So what is the condition? So when you look at the network, apply the condition and then uh, take the appropriate ratio. That's it. So, uh, so, sorry ma'am, but can you please uh, explain once more how did you come up with that expression of V2? Okay, so let me try to, uh, I hope uh, you know the voltage division principle. So if you have a voltage here and you want to find voltage across Z3, okay. So this voltage into Z3 divided by, so this is the only path of uh, current flow. So you need to understand this concept I2 is 0, there is no current flowing otherwise. So you have only I1 and this is the current path. So you need to find V2. So V2 means voltage across Z3. So how do we find voltage across Z3? Say this is some voltage, there is some voltage across uh, Z1, uh, this at this point. So that multiplied by Z3 divided by the total impedance of this particular uh, network, current path. All right. Okay. Ma'am, just to interrupt you, I have one doubt is that uh, whether this current I1 is not getting divided between Z1 and Z2. Okay. So when I say that, so this current flowing path, you need to understand what is the closed path of current flow. When there is no other current in this network, I2 is 0. So you have one closed path which will go like this. Right? Okay, ma'am, it is clear. Your uh, question is relevant when there is a, another current flowing through this path. Okay. Right ma'am, it is clear now. Okay. Uh, sorry, I hope uh, I can move to the next question. Uh, yeah ma'am, uh, I'm, oh. I'm sorry but uh, I, I'm still not convinced with the fact that I1 would not branch between Z2 and Z3. I mean Z1 mm -hmm. and Z2, sorry. Okay, so it let us assume that it will branch. Let us assume that it will branch. So. I will say I1 A and uh, I1 B. Let us assume that it will branch as I1 A and I1 B. Now, one current path, so I1 A is flowing like this through Z3, okay. And I2 A is flowing like this through, again through Z3. Any series path, any series path, which is a closed path, will have the same current flowing. Do you agree with me on that? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, now we need to understand that ultimately I1A is same as I1B, even though we assume that it is divided into I1A and I1B. Will it not be opposite in sign at least or because the direction would be still different, right? One would be going clockwise and the other would be going anti-clockwise if you consider this loop here. Okay. So when we say uh, the sign convention of current, we always assume that something like a sign convention is being taken uh, based on the voltage and uh, drop, say voltage drop. I am saying that I take the sign convention of current flowing like this is being so current flowing in one direction is being taken as positive current flowing in the opposite direction is being taken as negative. So as you said if I look at exactly what is the current uh, sign convention yes it is of like opposite sign but magnitude wise it is the same current. Yeah makes sense. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Uh, let us go to next problem. So, 
again this is another uh, interesting uh, ma'am uh, just to interrupt you before starting this question uh -huh. are these uh, v and i uh, imaginary um, means they are complex numbers or they are purely real numbers v and i v1 i1 v2 i2 z is uh, a complex number Z is a, Z1, Z2, Z3, but I'm talking about whether the voltages and currents are purely real or not. Are they purely real or they are imaginary in case of uh, Z parameters? Okay. I hope I understood your question. So you, you are saying that uh, like we have seen Z parameters, Z uh, matrix elements as uh, imaginary. So your question is uh, whether V, that means the voltage is imaginary or not. Exactly ma'am, voltages and currents both. Okay. So voltages and currents uh, need not be imaginary always. Now try to understand when we say um, the, the voltages or currents, if we talk it as to, uh, if we say it is imaginary, say I am saying that uh, there is some voltage with imaginary number, say J or something like that, J V naught or something like that, it means that uh, with the reference point, uh, J indicates a 90 degree phase shift. So basically when I say J V naught or something like that, it means that there is a phase shift from the reference of 90 degree phase shift. I mean 90 degree phase shift from the reference. So that is the concept of a phaser, a voltage phases. Okay. Now here, what do you mean by uh, when we take uh, voltages? So voltages always have a magnitude and we talk it as complex only when the only with respect to a reference voltage so say or with respect to current there is a phase shift or with respect to some incident voltage there is a uh, in, uh, say v1 with respect to v1 v2 has some phase shift so that is being indicated by voltage phases or we call it as imaginary uh, with that imaginary term j term okay so try to okay. understand Okay, thank you, ma'am. It's clear. It's okay. uh, totally clear. Okay. Uh, okay, let us look at how to solve. So, this is a similar uh, uh, problem. So, you may also try along with me. Uh, so, this, uh, let us start with the fundamental equation. So, V1 is equal to I1 Z11 plus I2 Z12 and V2 is equal to I1 Z21 plus I2 Z22 and you need to find out what Z12. So today we need this problem we need to look at Z12 is V1 by I2. What is the condition when I1 is equal to 0. So look at this network. In this network if you assume I1 as 0, that means there is no current flowing here. So you have only one current which is I2 which will flow. How, do, how does it flow? You see this will be the current path. Okay. And this path will be completed like this. So whenever we say look at a current flow, we need to always remember we need to have a closed path of current flow so this closed path of current flow we need to try to understand so this is how the current flows okay so now uh, let us uh, look at v1 so what is v1 v1 is the voltage drop across z b okay v1 is voltage drop across Zb. 
Why do I not look at Z A? Because there is no current flowing through Z A. Because the path is not complete there. Okay. Now this is a closed path. In this closed path you have current flowing like this. So how do we find the uh, current flowing? So this is I2. Here I2 is flowing. Here also I2 is flowing. So what is V1? V1 is equal to I2 into ZB. Now how do I take the ratio V1 by I2? So this V1 by I2 which is what we have to find Z12 is equal to ZB. So this is the final answer. Any doubts? Always remember uh, we need to look at the uh, close to path current flow. Is it clear? Can you please respond in the chat? Yes, ma'am, it's clear. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, just uh, trying to make sure that I am online so and audible to everybody. So, okay, I hope uh, the idea is clear. Let us go to the next. So, problem five. So, this uh, for the network shown, find out y11 parameter. y11 parameter. So, you are given with a, a pi type network. If you look at the shape of this network, this is called as a pi type network. So, wherein you have y1, y2, uh, y1 in series and y2 in, like in parallel. So, it is the shape of a pi, pi network. So, we call it like a pi network. So, let us uh, find out y11 parameter. So, for that we need to write the fundamental equation of uh, y matrix. So, i1 is equal to y11 v1 plus y12 v2 and i2 is equal to y21 v1 plus y22 v2. Okay. And now, what is to be found? y11 y11 is equal to i1 by v1 under the condition v2 is equal to 0. Okay. So, uh, v2 is equal to 0. What do you mean by v2 is equal to 0? Can anybody Open circuit, sir. Open. The output is short circuited. Yes, yes. So, V2 equal to 0 means this is a short. Okay. Call it as V2 equal to 0. So, if it is short, is there a relevance for Y2? No, ma'am. Uh, current will take the shortest resistance path. Okay. That is fine. Uh, the other question is, uh, so when we look at... Um, uh, uh, I1 by V1 under the condition V2 is equal to 0. So, what is V1? Can you tell me what is V1 from this? So, we have current I1, current I1 flowing like this and Y indicates the admittance matrix. So, keeping that in mind, we can write i1 divided by y1 plus y2. So, this is with the understanding that this y2 is irrelevant. Okay. Yes, v2 is equal to 0 is not assumed Lakshmi Narayanan. So, here when we have to find out y11, v2 has to go to 0. So, under the condition of v2 equal to 0, it is indicates that output is short circuited. So, this Y2 does not have any relevance. So, I can make the circuit like this. So, this is Y2 and this is Y1 and then we have a short. 
So this will be a, a little more uh, simplified network. So uh, and this I1 is flowing here. So if you look at the closed path of current flow, so I1 is what flows here. And how do we find V1? V1 is I1 divided by uh, V, uh, Y1 plus Y2. Keep in mind Y is admittance. I hope this is clear. So how do we find Y11? It is V, uh, sorry, I1, I1 by V1, I1 by V1, which is equal to some questions that are coming. Okay. What about I2? So there is a question in the chat. What about I2 here? Should we just ignore that? Okay. So we are not trying to ignore I2 here. So if you look at uh, how do we find Y11? We need to see what is I1 and what is V1. We need to take the ratio of I1 to V1 under the condition of V2 is 0. Okay. So under the condition of V2 is 0, you have this short circuit. Okay. And this Y2 does not have any relevance. Again, what this is the simplified network. So this is the short circuit. So assume that I2 is flowing like this. So as I said before, basically I1 and I2 are same here. I hope uh, this makes sense. Okay. So any other doubts? Okay, I hope uh, it's clear. So, let us move on to another uh, problem. Uh, it's on scattering metrics. So, uh, just a brief introduction of scattering metrics, I hope. I know that all of you might be knowing that. So, say if it is a 2 by 2 matrix, this is how we write the S matrix or the scattering matrix wherein S11 and S22 are the reflection coefficients okay, at port 1 and port 2 respectively. And what is S12 and S21? They are the transmission coefficients. So these transmission coefficients are basically say S12 is indicating the transmission from port 2 to 1 and S21 is indicating the transmission from 1 to 2. Okay. So, this is some introduction to the scattering matrix. So, the question is, two-part network having the scattering matrix. Scattering matrix is given to you. Uh, check whether it is lossless. Check whether it is reciprocal. So, how do we say whether it is reciprocal? If it is reciprocal, the condition is S should be equal to S transpose. If S is equal to S transpose, then it is reciprocal. So, I can say it is a reciprocal network because 0.6 angle. So, if I take the transpose of this, S transpose is 0.6 angle 0 and this 0.8 angle 45 degree again 0.8 angle 45 degree and 0.4 angle 0. So S is equal to S transpose so this is a reciprocal network. Now how do we find whether it is uh, lossless? So as you have already seen in the lectures let me just brief out to you if somebody has missed out on any points. Uh, modulus of S11 square, so 
so if i look at this column so we need to look at the columns mod s11 square plus mod s21 square should be equal to 1 and also mod s12 square plus mod s22 square is equal to 1 so if these two conditions are satisfied then only we can say it is a lossless network so uh, to get that let me look at this first column 0.6 square is 0.36 plus 0.8 square is 0.64 yes it is equal to 1 let us look at the second column 0.64 plus 0.16 which is not equal to 1 so i can say therefore not lossless okay so the option is option c it is a reciprocal network but it is not a lossless network ma'am i have just one question can't we interpret this uh, s matrix uh, similar to the z and y matrix that uh, since the diagonal elements 0 0.6 angle 0 and 0 0.4 angle 0 both are real all the elements are not complex that is why this is not lossless can we interpret in case of s matrix also like we interpreted the case of lossless uh, junction in case of uh, z and y matrix okay so if you write the s matrix in terms of j uh, can you tell me what will be this element this this particular ma'am that is a complex number yes it is a complex number and this is because a real is number ha, this is a real number and 0 0.6 angle 0 is also a real number okay so i am um, oh. my, my doubt is that mm. whether we can uh, by seeing these two diagonal mm. elements 0 0.6 and 0 0.4 can we conclude that this uh, this is not lossless because to be lossless all the elements in z and y matrix should be uh, imaginary so can mm. we interpret the s matrix also using that concept also what we used in the previous case okay so okay so let me try to uh, look at that way okay so you are saying that if there is uh, real elements in this matrix can we interpret it as not lossless okay Okay, to the best of my knowledge, right now, I, I am not sure whether we can interrupt uh, uh, to that case, but it looks we can in interpret, but maybe it, I am not sure. I can get back to you on this in the next okay. week. Okay, ma'am, it's all right. Thank you very much. Okay, so let us uh, look at problem seven. Uh, this is this is based on um, uh, so in the lecture 3 you have come across uh, ABCD matrix and S matrix or both both of them and the relationship between these two so this uh, problem can be solved based on the understanding from there so you need to find s21 parameter but s21 parameter can be found from abcd parameter so the ki the kind of these kind of networks it is easy to write the abcd matrix you have seen the uh, relevance of abcd matrix and how do we write the abcd parameters looking at the network so from abcd parameters you can write down the s21 parameter or we can uh, we, we uh, the professor has uh, derived how to find out s parameters from the abcd parameters so based on that we can do this problem so i am not going into the details of how we derive it and all so let us look at the final uh, outcome of that so here this is 4z0 which is coming in parallel with z0 okay so you have 
So I am directly writing the uh, formula 2 into ZL parallel Z0. So ZL is nothing but 4 Z0 divided by ZL parallel Z0 plus Z0. So replace ZL as 4 Z0. So you get this as 2 into 4 Z0 into Z0 divided by 5 Z0 divided by 4 Z0 square divided by 5 Z0 plus Z0. So Z0 cancels and you get it as 8 by 5 Z0 divided by 4 by 5 Z0 plus Z0. So Z0 will cancel and final answer will be 8 by 5 divided by 4 by 5 plus 1. So that becomes 9 by 5 which is equal to 8 by 9. So you can look at uh, the video lectures how we come across uh, the derivation of uh, I mean uh, how do we find S parameters from ABCD parameters. So if you look at that uh, we can come to this S21. So similarly you can find out S11, S12 and S22 also. Okay you can try that. I hope uh, there are no doubts. Can we move ahead? So basically this is a direct formula from... Hello? Uh, yes. Hello madam. Uh, ah, I yes, have one yes. uh, query actually. So assignment 2, uh, question number 9 is there. No? Like um, that if frequency in a waveguide, if frequency is less than the cutoff frequency of the waveguide, then... Uh, uh, like propagation constant is real. Actually, it has to be true, but uh, the uh, the key which is given is uh, like false actually. Okay. When frequency is less than the cutoff frequency of the waveguide, mm. then prop wave propagation is not supposed to take place. So at that time, uh, uh, for that case, uh, your uh, phase constant beta is completely zero. It has to become zero. So then in that case, that propagation constant gamma must be equal to alpha plus j beta, that beta as beta is zero, then uh, gamma must be alpha only. So uh, it has to be a real real one only. It has to be real. Gamma has to be real. Okay. But the uh, key which is given is uh, 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 false actually. Because it, is, it, it corresponds to evanescent mode, right, uh, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, as you said, uh uh, I understand, so uh, suddenly when you say assignment to question number 9, uh, first of all, I don't, uh, I am not able to gather which is that question and which is the uh, right yeah, answer. Uh, uh, so can, can I, I, will can de I will definitely look into that question. Uh, so yeah, please, yeah, yeah. Uh, so I am just noting it down, assignment 2. Assignment 2 and then uh, assignment, uh, uh, sorry, ninth question. Ninth it's question. True, or, true or false question actually. Okay. So, so like yeah, yeah has... sure. I'll get back to you uh, okay. after looking at the question. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, sure. But but uh, I have to get 100 actually, but 90 only I've got ah, it. Uh, so. I, I suggest you uh, please write to the discussion forum. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so that uh, you get the um, quickest response because yeah, I have yeah. to communicate to the course team again. It has to come back. So. Uh, please write to the discussion forum. Definitely, you will yeah. get a response to that. But I think I will, I think will not be able will not be able to write it uh, uh, in the mobile mo uh, mobile. I think right, ma'am. Actually, like uh, in 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 the desktop only. I think we can write uh, uh, a question. Uh, it's not permitting me to write in the in mobile actually. Okay, maybe in, while the using features, Swayam, yeah. Okay, maybe yeah, the feature yeah. is not so, enabled. So you can try using the desktop. to write in the like uh, the post question in that. Time. Mm. Okay. Yeah, yeah, but please look into that question actually. Yeah, yeah, okay, I, I will get okay. back to you on this in the next. Yeah, yeah, okay. okay, okay, thank you, man. Thank you very much. So. And uh, let us go to one more problem. I hope uh, we have time to solve one more. So this question, uh, 
so uh, this is again uh, something which is a direct uh, derivation already uh, discussed in the uh, lectures so if you remember uh, you had come across uh, you had come across how do we write the abcd parameters of a transmission line say i have a transmission line with the characteristic impedance z not and uh, propagate uh, phase constant beta then how do we write the abcd parameters so you have you know that cos beta l j z not sin beta l oops oh, sorry j y not sin beta l cos beta l okay so this had been discussed in the uh, lectures so this is the abcd matrix of a transmission line so here if you look at the question here you have a transmission line of characteristic impedance set not but there is another line which is a short circuited line so we call this as a stub basically so it's like an attachment to the regular transmission line which is a short circuited transmission line and this has an impedance of root to z not okay so this is a short circuited stub having uh, root to z not as the impedance which is being placed on this transmission line so at some lambda by 4 distance so i will not try to solve this question completely i will try to give a hint to this question so that you can attempt it okay so we know this is the general uh, uh, transmission line abcd parameters now there is a short circuited transmission line so first of all we need to understand what is short circuited transmission line of some impedance okay so how do we write z in z in is equal to j z not tan beta l so this will be the input impedance of a transmission line which is short circuited having a length l and having an impedance z not so here it is j into root to z not so this is the impedance of a short circuited section and what is beta l tan beta is 2 pi by lambda into length of that transmission line so as you see here the length is lambda by 4 so this is lambda by 4 so this comes out to be infinity right tan pi by 2 is infinity okay so the input impedance of that so uh, that this short circuited line is infinity that means that at a distance of lambda by 4 this short circuit becomes an open circuit okay so i hope now you will be able to uh find out the right answer for abcd parameters is there any doubts or uh, can anybody please uh, give your views what what could be the right option here so the clue and hint is given a short circuited transmission line of lambda by 4 length at a distant uh, 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 becomes uh, open circuited line so what will be the uh, abcd matrix for this particular network
and one more clue I can give here it is beta L beta is 2 pi by lambda into L is lambda by 4 which is the section of uh, lambda by 4 length section so this becomes again pi by 2 and sin pi by 2 is 1 okay and uh, this is the uh, impedance root 2 z naught so appropriate changes you can make so when beta l is pi by 2 cos beta l becomes 0 so these two param these two terms are 0 and look at these only those two terms exist so what could be the answer and remember here it is z naught and here it is y naught can i get any okay there is some question please explain how short circuit becomes an open circuit after lambda by 4 so okay so let me try to uh, so I hope you remember this from the transmission lines. So whenever you have a short circuited transmission line, uh, say you have a short circuited transmission line, okay. So ZL is 0, okay. And you are trying to find out the Z. So you have the fundamental equation of Z wherein you will apply zl equal to 0 applying that okay and with this is the characteristic impedance z naught so applying this you get zn is equal to j z naught tan beta l okay suppose the length of this transmission line is lambda by 4 then j z naught tan of beta is 2 pi by lambda and L is lambda by 4. So lambda lambda cancels. This becomes tan pi by 2. Tan pi by 2 is infinity. So Z in is equal to infinity. Which indicates that. Which indicates that. So Z in is infinity. That means this is an open circuit. So short circuit at a length of lambda by 4. Becomes an open circuit it, it is an equivalent to an open circuit okay i hope this is clear now okay so keeping this in mind look at this question okay short circuited transmission line at a length of lambda by 4 becomes open circuit so what is the effective network now so the network is a transmission line having this ABCD matrix. So given this ABCD matrix, you apply the appropriate values. So beta L you have to apply. Beta L is pi by 2. Sin pi by 2 is 1. Cos pi by 2 is 0. So I am saying that these two parameters will definitely go to 0. So there itself you can actually find out the answer I think. Okay, I am not revealing the answers. You can uh, definitely look at that. Ma'am, is there any good book you can refer for solving this microwave circuits and scattering matrix problems? Okay. Um, we have we have got immense help from your uh, 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 this uh, uh, lecture, this one hour lecture. We have got immense help, but at least uh, uh, from my side, I want to refer some books so that means no uh, confusion remains actually. Okay, so I suggest you to go through the references given uh, by professor in the website. Uh, as you see, uh, we have this poster textbook. I don't remember exactly the name of the title of the textbook. Uh, but you can definitely look at uh, 
I can just quickly give you So you have uh, DM Poser is the author, Microwave Engineering and uh, another very good textbook is uh, Liao's textbook for uh, microwave devices and circuits. Uh, that's a very nice book which I used to refer. Uh, so that, that has this S parameters specifically, S parameters are more discussed there. Okay, thanks, ma'am. Yeah. So, thank you all. Uh, uh, thank just a second. Uh, sorry, sorry for interrupting. Uh, can we please uh, quickly go to question number six? Maybe I have an explanation for what Joanto asked that time. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah sure. Sure. If if we change this uh, zero point four to zero point uh, uh, eight, okay, mm -hmm. it becomes lossless despite becoming uh, imaginary. So what we apply to, I mean, Y and Z mm -hmm. may not be applied to spectrum. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's the right point. Yeah. Uh, but I will definitely find out uh, how, why it is, why that, uh, um, there is some theoretical reason behind that lossless nature. So I, bring that up in the next week yeah thanks pointing out subhashish that's an easy way to uh, look at that question yes even if this is 0 0.8 angle 0 so if when it is 0 0.8 angle 0 sorry when this is 0 0.6 angle 0 right yes yeah 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 uh, 0.6 angle 0 this is still a real number so these two are real but it will be a lossless network. So basically the concept of uh, lossless network is uh, you need to understand that. So from that probably we will be able to figure out that any lossless network means that real of average power is equal to zero. So this is the fundamental uh, fundamental understanding of a lossless network. That means uh, this average power real part of average power is zero so given an input network whatever power coming inside it is being distributed to other ports say say it is coming to one port it is being distributed to other ports there is no losses in the anywhere any any of the junctions that is the kind of understanding about a lossless network but uh, we will have uh, uh, definitely you will be able to find out the figure out the reason from the video lectures if you watch it really well you can go back to that and see once again what is the real uh, nature of a lossless network and uh, yeah thanks thanks everyone thanks for joining uh, meet you next week hope uh, there are no other clarifications okay somebody is asking me the author name so you can, I will just uh, type the author name. Textbook name is Microwave Devices and Circuits. Thank you all, uh, I am closing the session.